an inverse Kramer ETF has been filed with the SEC, and Jim Kramer appears to be losing his mind over it. On a near daily basis, Jim Kramer is now tweeting about this inverse Kramer ETF. It appears to be living rent-free in his head. This, of course, is interesting because Jim Kramer has an infamously bad stock pricking track record. This has been documented in academic literature as well. So what I'm going to look at is Jim Kramer's reaction to the inverse Kramer ETF, what the inverse Kramer ETF appears to actually be doing, and whether it's something you might consider as an investment vehicle. And the short version of that is be super careful whenever you're investing on any of these blind strategies. The inverse Kramer ETF might be a neat joke, but one could potentially lose some money on it. So with that in mind, let's launch into what Jim Cramer is saying about the inverse Kramer ETF before we analyze it in a little bit more detail. Jim Cramer's first comment about the inverse Kramer ETF is, as always, I welcome people betting against me. I have done this for 42 years. Those who know me know that you would be betting against Apple at $5, Google since inception, Meta at $18, Amazon at $10, Nvidia at $25, AMD at $5. I welcome all comers. He's throwing down the gauntlet to anyone who is betting against him. He then follows this up as far as crypto, same. I bought a farm with my Bitcoin winnings, all announced. And I bought a boat with Ethereum, all announced. Everything disclosed. I want you to bet against me. You do not do this for 42 years and lose money every year. These will be my only comments about this exciting new way for a promoter to make money and I'm sure it can be tricked to make me look bad. Again, nothing new in my career. And it won't be new long after the wagerers move on to CDs and cash. Good luck. Now, he states that this is going to be his last comment on the Inverse Kramer ETF. It's not. He continues to make comments about this, and I'm sure that I've missed some of them. He follows it up a full week later. If I say I like GameStop, does the Inverse Kramer ETF short GameStop? If I say it 25 times, is it then the inverse Kramer's biggest position? Should we ask the SEC? Now, to be clear here, the SEC has filings from the inverse Kramer ETF. They specifically go over what their investment strategy is, and I'll get to that in a second. So I'm not entirely sure what he means to prove with this tweet. It's kind of all just noise and motion here. Thereafter, he states, Bird Bath hanging in. By writing that, does it make it an inverse Kramer sell? How's that going? Again, he seems to not totally understand how the inverse Kramer ETF is working. In particular, if he just says a facetious or sarcastic or jokey comment on Twitter, the inverse Kramer ETF is hardly going to take a position on that because it's not a serious comment. I'm not entirely sure that he quite realizes this. Something appears not to be processing in his head about what the inverse Kramer ETF does. He then states, I'm having fun with some of my more obtuse followers because they don't watch, listen or read me. Why is that fun? What kind of miserable sad lives do these people have? How can they be so obsessed with me? In the end, I host a cable TV show about stocks. Again, he's still commenting on it a week after he said that he wouldn't. To which there was a rather pointed response. Jim, don't listen to the haters. Me and my seven kids watch your show every night. We've been following your stock picks for years and it brings us closer together. We share a one-bedroom apartment because I lost all my money. Which I thought was probably the best way of responding to his diatribes. And he doubles down. Almost as many people trash me as do Putin. Man, he must be some bad stock picker or something, besides being a fascist ending machine. I don't even know where to start with that one. Then in response to a couple of comments that were slightly facetiously taking him on, he states, Well, look up, Mr. Hempton. If you ever watch or look, you would know what I've been saying. But it's probably just more fun to slag. And a response to not Jerome Powell. I have been saying sell a lot of stuff. You just don't watch or listen. So you better be buying big Monday. I will tell Jay about how clever you are, not Jerome Powell. Hoo-ha! So Jim Cramer appears to be continuing to lose his mind about the inverse Cramer ETF. It's slightly hilarious to watch, or at least it would be, if every second tweet weren't an advertisement for Mezcal on his Twitter stream. So that then begs the question of what exactly does the inverse Kramer ETF do? What exactly is its investment strategy? 
but was clear that's something we are probably slightly concerned about if we're going to be investing our money. So they filed with the SEC to lodge both the inverse Kramer ETF and the long Kramer ETF, which are called SGIM and LGIM, respectively. They go through what their investment strategy is here, and they specifically state the following. The fund is an actively managed exchange-traded fund that seeks to achieve its investment objective by engaging in transactions designed to perform the opposite of the return on investments recommended by the television personality Jim Cramer. Under normal circumstances, at least 80% of the fund's investments is invested in the inverse of securities mentioned by Cramer. The fund's advisor monitors Cramer's stock selection and overall market recommendations throughout the trading day, as publicly announced on Twitter or his television programs broadcast on CNBC, and sells those recommendations short or enters into derivative transactions such as futures, options, or swaps that produce a negative correlation with those recommendations. The fund goes long stocks or ETFs that represent sectors Kramer is negative on. The fund uses index ETFs and inverse index ETFs to take the opposite side of Kramer's announced market view. The fund's portfolio is comprised generally of 20 to 25 equally weighted equity securities of any market capitalization of domestic and foreign issuers. If Kramer does not take a view on any of the securities in the fund's portfolio, the advisor retains the discretion to sell positions once profit or loss targets are met, or market conditions such as large swings in either direction necessitate a sale, and replace them with securities that meet the criteria of the fund's invest initial portfolio. Under normal circumstances, the fund will hold positions no longer than a week, but could hold positions longer if Kramer continues to have a contrary opinion. The advisor has discretion not to transact in equity securities mentioned by Kramer, or engage in related transactions if such securities or transactions are I, not more suited to the ETFs, or two, have excessive levels of risk, or three, are illiquid, or four, are negatively impacting the fund's ability to meet its IRS and Investment Company Act diversification requirements. In addition, the advisor has discretion to determine whether Kramer's statements about any given equity security is in fact an investment recommendation and thus ineligible for inclusion in the fund's portfolio. Due to the fund's investment strategy, it is expected that the fund will have a high turnover rate. That's specifically in the SEC filing. They go over some more details about the ETF in that filing as well, so I would encourage you to check out that filing if you're interested in learning more. But they specifically go through a couple of the comments Jim Cramer had mentioned, so he'd clearly not read the filing. For example, if he is being facetious or sarcastic or not making a genuine recommendation, the ETF is not going to act upon it. Furthermore, the ETF retains the discretion to exit losing positions or take profits on good positions if they believe those profits are not going to continue onwards. So this is not a direct blind following or a direct blind inverse of Jim Cramer's recommendations. Rather, there is some discretion overlaid onto it, which helps to smooth over some of the other problems that might arise. For example, if Jim Cramer recommends a position that is sensible, then it's unlikely the inverse Kramer ETF would go into that position because that would probably violate one of their other requirements. So they retain the discretion to not short or not inverse the positions that actually are reasonable positions if those ultimately do arise. This of course begs the question of should you consider investing in the inverse Kramer ETF or the long Kramer ETF? Well, I'm not going to give you investment advice. That would really depend upon your personal risk profile, your risk and return objectives, and what exactly you're intending to achieve from your portfolio, including how diversified you already are. However, I can comment about Jim Cramer's track record, which gives you some context about the impetus for the inverse Cramer ETF. Now, rather, hopefully, there's an article or a blog post by Money Crashes that goes through some of Jim Cramer's performance, and they link to an article in the Journal of Retirement. Now, the Journal of Retirement analyzed the performance of Mad Monday Charitable Trust. They analyzed the risk and return profile of that as compared to the S&P 500. They found that this trust underperformed the S&P 500 on a returns basis. That was partly attributable to it having a significant position in cash, which over the time period meant they weren't as strongly invested in the equities as would have been ideal. It also was slightly due to some charitable distributions that were made. However, even accounting for those, the Sharpe ratio for Jim Cramer's trust here was significantly worse than that of the S&P 500. The Sharpe ratio measures the excess return per unit of risk. 
a higher Sharpe ratio is good. The Sharpe ratio for the S&P 500 was 0.41, according to the article, at least during that time period. For Jim Cramer's portfolio, it was 0.16. His Sharpe ratio was under half that of the S&P 500. That is incredibly bad. He's taking more risk and seemingly generating lower return, which manifests in a worse Sharpe ratio. In essence, investing his portfolio would not have done particularly well. However, he did still have a positive return. It was just less positive than the S&P 500. So going short, Jim Cranor's recommendations would not have helped you per se, you would have ended up with a negative return. However, if you went short his recommendations and long the S&P 500, you maybe could have evened those out a little bit. It would have been a long short portfolio. But nevertheless, going short something that has a positive return is generally not a brilliant idea. Money Crashes then updated this, and they looked at his recommendations through the first half of 2022. What they found is that over the first day of a recommendation, the first day return was 1.2%. However, this return went into negative territory over the week and month afterwards. However, they note that he was less negative than the broader market during 2022. That is, if you invested in Jim Cramer's recommendations, you would have been better off than investing in the S&P 500. However, you might still have been worse off than just sitting on that cash, because having a zero return is better than having a negative return. So he still wasn't doing especially well. And if you were to have shorted these recommendations during 2022, you would have ended up in slightly positive territory, which would have enhanced your art performance versus the broader market. So in general terms, should you invest in inverse Cram ETF? Well, you're taking on a lot of risk. It means that even if Jim Cramer is underperforming the market, as long as he's in positive territory, the short portfolio could end up with a negative return, which is not something that you want. Furthermore, just blindly doing the opposite of another individual is not necessarily a brilliant way to make money. Now granted, the inverse Cramer ETF reserves the discretion to decide to not execute a particular position. But that is a little bit vague and you could do that yourself. So certainly you could analyze which positions to take. And before I were to leap into one of these two ETFs, I'd want to see how they are performing, how they are managed, and whether they are genuinely doing a reasonable job of generating returns, at least on a risk-adjusted basis. Now, I hope that gives you a bit of an overview about the Inverse Kramer ETF. If you're interested in finding out what I'm buying or selling, you can check out my membership program and you can sign up using the link in the description below. And I go through what I purchase, what I don't, and the like. At the moment, my listed portfolio is super concentrated, in part because I'm betting on the Twitter takeover and trying to get the merger outlift from that ultimately completed. However, I also talk a little bit about my unlisted investments in startups and some of the logic behind making those unlisted investments. So you can check that out using the link in the description below, and hopefully that does help you out. And otherwise, thanks a lot for tuning in, and hopefully I will see you for future videos as well.